I can't believe it. Major Sanon, Dr. Walker. You're in better shape than I expected, Kaiser. Shouldn't take as long to get you back up to full fighting capacity. This is good to hear. I was told there was a new threat on the horizon. I wish to learn more. Percival will give you the full story. Plus, get you dressed for the occasion. Occasion? Where are we going? Londinian. Hmm. Londinian. Doctor, I will require additional armaments. That's the plan. Come on. Captain, you're with me. Time to walk you through what we came up with. You remember that creature we talked about before you went to Nera? The thing that eats Terramorphs, the Asilis? Apparently, they were bloodhounds for Terramorphs. But when the UC ran low on synthetic foods during the Colony War, the Asilis were chosen to fill in the gaps. We thought they were harvested to extinction. But in the data, the research team found the location of a few remaining specimens. As you can see, what we're proposing is bringing them back. We'd breed populations of them, distribute them to human worlds, and then let nature take its course, using a method that thousands of years of adaptation have already perfected. We could speed up their breeding process using, well, using some of the same technologies that were used to create me. We even think that with some time and investigation, we could use the Asili's hunting skills to track down the Terramorph transmission method at long last. Find out how humanity spread them and put an end to the Terramorph problem definitively. All our data suggests so. Asili's, they're impressive hunters. The few tests we've been able to run, well, they more than got the job done. They're also shockingly adaptable. The data suggests they're able to thrive just about anywhere, and we plan to selectively breed them so they can hunt terramorphs wherever they're hiding. Which is important, because we did some cross-referencing in the terramorph data. On worlds where Asili's were present, terramorphs weren't. This suggests that however it is Terramorphs are getting onto our worlds, Asilis are somehow cleaning that up as well. These creatures are good at what they do. If you pick a fight with one, or you're a Terramorph, sure. But Asilis were already spread across the galaxy once before during the Colony War, as livestock. They're far less of a danger than the one we're proposing to clean up. I... I suppose that's a fair comparison. Except that this time, we'd be protecting human lives, not ending them. Now, there is another option for removing the Terramorphs from our worlds. It's faster, Maybe even more efficient, but riskier. A microbe, something we could aerosolize, let spread, and have it clean up anything with Terramorph DNA for us, which would include morphs, and we expect their transmission method. It'd still take time to build, test, and distribute, but no other method could hold a candle to it when it comes to sheer efficiency. Not even the Asilis. Percival assures me that they're minimal. He'll be able to encode safeguards against mutation in the agent's genetics so that they stick to the task of cleaning up terramorphs. But the microscopic world has a tendency to behave in ways you can't always predict. So to say there's zero risk would be a lie. Well, that's still not 100%. But it sounds like the Vanguard will actually be picking up a fair bit of it. But there's no sense in hammering down those sorts of details before we've made a decision on which route we're taking. Well, so that's tricky. 
Both plans are going to take major investments in time and resources. We're talking years of work, and not to mention some highly specialized materials. Terramorph cell lines we can breed quickly and consistently to test on. Asili's gene samples we can use to rebuild their bloodlines. Or sharpen our microbes' tracking skills. Not the sort of things any labs just got lying around. But we think we found a lead. One place in the known galaxy where we know we should be able to find all the materials we need. All paths lead to Londinian. It was the central hub for Asili's processing during the Colony War. But, and this part's exciting, the Terramorph data suggests Asili's were first found there. The planet it's on, Toleman II, was their homeworld. Meaning, there's a very good chance their prey, the Terramorphs, came from that same world. Which would also explain why no one ever suspected that planet as the Terramorph source world. The Asili's were too damn effective at cleaning them up. Additionally, it explains why, once the Asili's were gone, the outbreak there was so catastrophic. Londinian could very well be where the Terramorph saga began, and the key to its end. <laughs> it's certainly not encouraged, but the UC's given their sign-off for this excursion. This trip is all above board. It's dangerous, yes, but Kaiser, Percival, and I, we've trained for this. And you're not so green yourself. And the last thing I want right now is for the UC to stick us with some gung-ho jarhead who's gonna put us and the mission at risk. Captain, you're the reason we're all here right now. You're the person I think can help us finish it. Will you join us on this? Exactly what I was hoping to hear. Now, the UC has a small operating base on Londinian's outskirts. We're cleared for access, but we'll need to check in with the base commander, Sarah Hatoum, when we touch down. I'm gonna help Percival and Kaiser prep, but once that's done, we'll rendezvous with you there. But you need to know, Londinian? It belongs to the Terramorphs. They'll have anti-Xeno gear for us at the base, but I'd make sure you've got your favorite arms on hand.
I pride myself on knowing everyone on this world, and I don't know you. You're with the collection team then, I presume. Either that, or you're one deeply unlucky trespasser. Vanguard, eh? Brief said you were an... eclectic group. You must have really shined out on the fringe to get assigned a task like this. Ah, then this must be the rest of your outfit. Commander Hatoum. I have no need for introductions, Major Simon. Dr. Walker, your reputations precede you. As does the urgency of your mission, so I'll get to it. Now, Londinian is one of the most dangerous places in the Milky Way. It's with good reason my soldiers and I do everything we can to avoid entering the city. Terramorphs are omnipresent, and the structural damage left behind when... when Major Sanon's father bombed its spaceport has turned large swathes of the metropolis into a decaying labyrinth. As such, we'll be providing you all with gear, information, and uploading municipal unlock codes to your robot. Every tool you could need to succeed out there. Except one. Once you're on the other side of those barriers, you will be on your own. If you get into trouble, my people will not be coming. Do we understand each other? The initial Terramorph outbreak that overran Londinian during the tail end of the Colony War came as a complete shock. Waves of the creatures appeared out of nowhere, and the city was quickly overwhelmed. There were some attempts at evacuation, but Ve Victus decided more definitive action was merited. He ordered the spaceport to be bombed, ensuring no other ships could leave the city, halting the spread of the outbreak but leaving large sections in ruins and condemning countless lives. And the intervening 20 years have only made Londinian more hostile, not less. So my people will not be coming for you out there. Understood? We are unwanted guests on this planet and, as a rule, I don't put my people in any more risk than is absolutely necessary. We've got it hard enough out here. So, no, there will be no cavalry sweeping into the rescue. Terramorphs, and plenty of them. Outside our little sanctuary here, much of the planet is theirs. For that reason, we keep our trips into the city to a minimum. That also means our intel becomes largely historical once you go much beyond the defenses. It's also why I want to make sure I'm being crystal clear. Out there, you're on your own. Precisely. I'll leave you to your preparations then. You can find your equipment in our armory, base of the tower just outside. Now, once you're outside the base, it's my personal suggestion you make a beeline to the nearby Asili's plant. It contains one of our field caches. Though, I can't guarantee it won't contain anything else. I hope you all find what you're looking for out there. Robot, you're coming with me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Commander. Percival, you all set to hook into their comms tower? Should only take a few minutes. Let's get this done and get the hell out of here. Percival will be scanning the city for our samples from here. When he finds one, he'll transmit the coordinates to us out in the field. Ten points a bit strong. The equipment will be able to get us a rough location of any acceptable samples in the scan area. It'll be up to you, Kaiser, and I to find the things. All right. Head over to the armory and gear up. Once you're done, we'll meet by the entrance to the city.
Those codes will allow you to temporarily restore power to most facilities in the city. while you're out there. Don't trust what the voices tell you. All set on your gear? You... Are you ready to do this? Then let's get this show on the road. Kaiser? Percival, everything green on your ends? I am ready. Personal comm should be routed through Kaiser now. You copy that? Roger, loud and clear. Perhaps too loud. Oh, you're a riot robot. Kaiser, kick it off.
on the processing plant. Cash with some goodies is towards the rear of the facility. Cousin, we close enough for you to dial in the location of those samples from here? Yes, they are faint, but I have detected multiple valid signatures. I have restored power to the containers. Jackpot! Get down there and collect as many as you can.
handles collected. All right. Now hand those over to Kaiser, and let's get out of here. Kaiser, this flora, this is Lazarus' plant, isn't it? Confirmed. You know, no one even realized it was a living thing until someone got it under a microscope and saw it had cells. Can't be cultivated anywhere but Londinian. <gasps> Real marvel. in bloom. You know, we might be some of the only... What's... What's happening? It can't be true. Heat leeches are everywhere. They live everywhere. That means terramorphs. Oh my god. 
You just saw that, right? You would tell me if I was losing my mind. That heat leech became a terramorph. The pests that have snuck onto every planet are baby terramorphs. Heat leeches hide out in ships, sneak away after landing, and then with time they transform. We, we just found out how terramorphs move between planets. That I don't have an answer for right now. But if they share a genome, like most nymphs and adults do, the microbe should have no problem dealing with heat leeches and terramorphs. The Aceles will have to look into, but given what we know about the creatures, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked to find that they've got an appetite for both. No, Lazarus plants can't grow anywhere but here, let alone blossom. People have tried. Plus, if what we just witnessed was happening anywhere else, well, it wouldn't just be Londinian lost to these things. What we just saw, it, it must be some kind of alternate growth method. One that winnows 70 years of maturation into seconds. It's incredible. Pretty Major is right. But if what we just saw, if that's possible, the Lazarus plant, it's clearly an accelerant for the terramorph, a heat leech transformation process. Make one into the other in an instant. But that means if anyone knew about this, they could trigger a terramorph spawning. You could sneak a leech into a city or even multiple leeches into a place like New Atlantis. Good God. The attack on New Atlantis, does this... Could someone have set that up? But first, you'd have to know the truth about all this. Well, we're never gonna know if you don't catch that thing. Get after it! We may proceed. Go! understand what it is we just stumbled on here. Exactly. Someone saw the Lazarus plant in action and used it to trigger the attacks. A bioweapon no one would recognize as one. Oh, that's a terrifying prospect. Sort of thing that'll keep you up at night. And the sort of thing whoever did this probably didn't expect us to uncover some sense, actually. Tau Seti was likely their first test, someplace remote where no one would question a few settlers going missing. Ensure the big show, the attack on New Atlantis, would be a success. And the timing of that one. It couldn't have been just luck that it happened right when we were asking the Cabinet to do something about the Terramorphs. These attacks. 
I think someone planned them to set all this in motion. I can't. At least, I didn't think it could. But maybe if we're right about this, someone bound away. They certainly were. But having this answer, well, it raises a couple big questions. Who could pull something like this off? And why? Let's save the discussion for when you all aren't standing in the universe's closest equivalent to hell frozen over. If we're gonna do anything to prevent more Terramorph attacks, human cause or otherwise, we need that final sample. Roger that. Kaiser, get us into the spaceport. The entrance is this way. Yeah, my 
my word. Transcription complete. Physical copy available. An invisible weapon. He knew. He knew about the Lazarus plant. Grab that recording. We... We should talk. Evictus. He destroyed this place. Killed these people to keep what he knew about the Lazarus plan and the terror morphs and all this a secret. Then he... You heard that recording. He saw the potential of the plant as a weapon, and hid it away. He killed those people to keep them from sharing what they might have seen. Condemned this whole city to death. He's a... He's... No. He's worse than a murderer. He's a butcher. He doesn't give a damn about human lives. He simply uses them as pawns to satisfy his goals. Yes. Exactly what we all thought he was. But if the plant was used to trigger the attacks, could Vay Victus have been involved in the massacre on New Atlantis? And even if he wasn't directly involved, I guarantee he knows something. So you're telling us that the attack on New Atlantis was Vey Victus' responsibility, just like the loss of Londinium. That's insane. But I guess we're not getting any more answers right now. Come on, let's go get that last sample. Yeah. When you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. Try it now!
while we can. Good. Now just stash that sample with Kaiser and we're done. on the comms towards the end there. But it sounded like this was a success. Got everything we need to put this plan in motion. connection might have gotten a bit fuzzy there, but do I have it right that Vay Victus knew about this damn plant? That's what it sounded like. Huh. Guess the old Admiral must have told someone what he learned. Even he's not clever enough to pull off an attack like that from the great beyond. It's a bit more complicated than that. I'm sorry, what? He's pulling my leg, right? Adrian? No, I don't believe he is. So that means we have a suspect. I believe that's exactly what that means. Look, Captain, Percival and I, we need to get these samples back to the lab. Ensure we'll be able to handle cleaning up the leeches as well as the terramorphs. But Ve Victus is the only solid lead we've got on the attacks. Since you're the only one who knows where he is, can you speak to him? See if you can get him to cough up anything he might know. Good. We'll all meet back at Mast, outside the Cabinet Chambers. They're gonna want to know everything we've uncovered here. Best of luck, Captain. And thank you for dealing with him.
Hadrian were headed for Londinian of all places. I presumed you must be onto something big. Did you find what you were looking for?
Simple to say now. But with the outbreak raging from a barely understood source, the moment demanded quick action. So I did what was required. I removed the dangerous variable from an already catastrophic war. But then, as the war ended, my trial, my execution, I made a decision. After all, I'd given everything for the colonies. My life as I knew it included. And what did I get in return? Was there any effort by the UC to protect my legacy? My daughter's legacy? No. We were sacrificed when all we did was serve. So I kept what I'd learned and arranged the attacks to set things right again. My daughter. She becomes a hero. I become a trusted advisor, having found Kaiser, the research team, and cement my new position of influence when I hand them the name of the person responsible for the attack on New Atlantis. The dear departed Dr. Reginald Orlais, the associate who aided me all these years, and whom I always slated to take the fall. What luck he was stopped dead before he could hurt anyone else. His decades on the run brought to an end by another unlikely hero. You. Why would I want to be in the good graces of the people who control my very life? I don't know, Captain. Maybe I still dream of a life outside these walls someday. A new face would be needed, of course, but it wasn't an impossibility. Though now, I'm not so sure. Wasn't easy. But the beauty of being loathed is that people will do whatever they can not to deal with you. They wanted to pretend I didn't exist. And so I used their blind eye to my advantage. Still, establishing a back channel to Orlais via the UC recovery teams was painstaking work. I've led campaigns less nerve wracking. They believed they were luring in wanted criminals, but were in fact delivering precisely encoded slates, filled with instructions invisible to any but their recipient, dropped off at just the right moments to fall into the proper hands, all without the UC realizing whom you were actually dealing with. Slow work. <laughs> but as you can see, ultimately effective. you've taken. <laughs> Orlais was the man whose death you brought about around the moon of Etheria, the pilot of the Warlock, the man I had to eliminate to hide my secret. Someday. <laughs> 
something befitting the dedication to the colonies you two have shown. While of course they can't give you a command, responsibility like that has to be earned. The cabinet does have access to considerable resources. I expect you'll be quite pleased with the result, and none of it would have happened without my intervention. You're being honored only because I arranged the situations where it could happen. Be grateful, and let's not forget the importance of our actual endgame. Eliminating the Terramorphs, securing knowledge of the Lazarus plant. What we've set in motion is going to protect thousands, maybe millions of lives. I'm simply requesting one more life be protected. Mine. I've already sent along the evidence of Orlaza's role in the attacks to the Cabinet, leaving out my own involvement. All I ask is that you confirm as much to the Cabinet. Tell them that it was Orlais and Orlais alone. After all, I do still have a long list of threats to the UC. This needn't be the end of our good works together. How many have you killed to get where you are now? There are no great works that don't cost lives, Captain. Whether it's winning a war, or digging a tram tunnel. So we sacrificed a few dozen in the attacks to possibly protect millions. That seems like a fair exchange to me. I only hope you'll see the same, and leave my name out of the discussions to come. Hunting down criminals and other threats to the United Colonies. I expect they'll give me a bit more free range once this is all over. You would help me, like you did with Orlais. Track them down, and keep them from doing harm to the United Colonies. Impossible, though, if the Cabinet learns I'm the one responsible for the attacks. Perfect timing. We just got in. So on our end. Means either plan. Considering what the I already sent along. So what about your end? Did my father tell you? What... I knew it. The sec <laughs> It So you're telling all that. Well. Exactly. Bring just so I guess that unless there were this might be then here we go.
Welcome back, all of you. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. But according to Hadrian's report and the second one I just received, it seems the Terramorph attack on New Atlantis was no random occurrence, but a planned strike. Is what I'm reading here true? My god. An attack? Using Terramorphs? How is that possible? You will all receive a full briefing once we're done here. So then, is what the second report claims correct? Did Reginald Orlais commit these attacks, Captain? Orlais? It's true, ma'am. I heard the recording myself. My father figured out how to use Terramorphs as weapons. He did what? That... that... that's impossible. He doesn't have the kind of access to... Clearly, he made his own access, Chief Sarkin. Madam President, I have been saying for years that not dealing with that man was going to end in tragedy. Enough! I hope everyone here understands that what has just been shared is a state secret of the highest order. This information does not leave this room. Now, that's quite the accusation you're leveling, considering Francois Sanon has not left containment for the better part of two decades. You have evidence to back this up? It just transformed a terramorph out of thin air. An invisible weapon. No plan I would be safe. Have it help us. I is that actually him? I'd know that voice anywhere. That's Francois. He knew they could do this. And said nothing. He's a sociopath. Plain and simple, ma'am. Officer, please collect that recording. Yes, ma'am. Begging your pardon, Captain? We'll, of course, be launching a full investigation into how this could have happened. Though I have little doubt the Admiral will be quick to share all he knows on the subject once confronted with that recording. Chief Yassine, can you send one of your interrogators to have a little chat with the Admiral? I'll issue the order immediately. Good. Combined with everything else you all have uncovered. Well, I don't think the United Colonies can thank you enough. We failed the people of the Colonies by not dealing with Ve Victus sooner. I intend to rectify that mistake immediately. That's... That's truly disconcerting to hear. But cutting off Vae Victus's contact with the outside world is likely to be just the beginning of his punishment. That will be up to the cabinet to decide. But I don't appreciate our mercy being taken advantage of. It's well past due. Now, with our villain unmasked, we can attend to the other matters at hand. With the threads you've brought together here, the Lazarus plant, the attacks, the heat leeches, the three of you have likely spared thousands of lives, but it now falls to the cabinet to ensure this can never happen again. As such, the cabinet will be securing the Lazarus plant on Londinian. All materials related to the plant will be classified to ensure no one else learns its true nature. A sound decision, Madam President. Well, luckily the natural hostility of Londinian makes keeping out trespassers relatively easy, but will ensure its growth is contained that access to the plant is only permitted via highly regulated clearances and that our true presence on Londinian is increased. Tell the Freestar Collective? Why? So they have another tool to utilize against us? I'm in agreement. I fail to see the value here. That's true. With all the mistakes and the deception that's been going on, 
The UC has an obligation to be as open and honest as possible. Oh, that is an interesting idea. A grand gesture to further display this cabinet doesn't think like those of the past. The observers on Mars have proven such a gesture can bear fruit. So, you want us to make nice with the Collective by sharing our state secrets? No, I want us to display plainly the UC's actual intentions, that the plant will never be used as a weapon again. Hmm. That does sound worthwhile, Chief Kalkarni. Very well. We'll get the Collective involved in the management. Thank you for the suggestion, Captain. So then, to our final topic. The Cabinet has agreed to implement a plan that will deal with the Terramorph, and now also Heatleach's presence on human worlds. In fact, we've already begun enacting measures to check all UC ports and settlements for undiscovered nests. But we all understand this is only a partial solution. The project we're embarking on will be a long and difficult one. So our first step must be deciding how exactly this all will be handled. Madam President, this microbe is clearly too much of a risk. The Asilis are the safer approach. To someone with limited knowledge of biology, perhaps? The technology behind the microbe is solved science, Madam President. It isn't dangerous. Using it to wipe out the Terramorphs would be the quickest path to protecting humanity. And fast results always lead to the best outcomes. Don't they? As you can see, there remains debate among the Cabinet. We were hoping your group might issue a recommendation. Major? We've had a few discussions, but our group is similarly split. Only the Captain has yet to weigh in. I see. Captain, I know this may not be your area of expertise, but we'd like to know your take on the matter. Glad to see someone's not afraid of a little applied genetics. The science division is in full agreement. I doubt there's another body in the galaxy that could pull it off. Absolutely correct. There are no better hands in the galaxy for this project than ours. Order, please. And Major Sinan? Dr. Walker, you'd find this acceptable? We trust the captain's judgment. Then the matter is settled. We'll begin the process immediately. Today marks day one for the United Colonies Terramorph Management Division, making you three the founding members of the TMD. As befits such a group, the Cabinet wanted to display its gratitude. Today, we will be adding three new Class One citizens to our ranks. Class One? For the three of us? Are you joking? What he means to say is, thank you, ma'am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. It's a status reserved only for those who've dedicated their lives to the United Colonies, or done great things for its cause. Class Ones enjoy an ample credit disbursement, an additional reduction on the cost of colonial goods, and I'm told the penthouse is rather impressive. You all have earned it. Now, there's much to be done. Major Sinan, Dr. Walker, I hope you two are willing to continue your efforts spearheading the TMD's research on Mars. We'd be honored, ma'am. As for you, Captain, the Vanguard will be providing much of the on-the-ground support for the TMD. As a member of both the Vanguard and the TMD, I believe you'll have your pick of duties. Speak to your commander, Tuala, if I recall correctly. He should be able to provide you with assignments going forward, plus help you collect the benefits that come with being named Class One. On behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our sincerest gratitude. This meeting is adjourned.